One of the reasons behind all that bargain hunting, Canadians are spending more on housing. It now takes 63% of median family income to own a home in Canada. That's much higher than the 30% that most financial experts consider affordable. It's a problem that has attracted all sorts of new programs and spending announcements to increase the housing supply. But as Mackenzie Gray tells us, the factors leading to the spike in shelter costs are not easy to fix. It's a top complaint around the Christmas dinner table, the skyrocketing cost of housing. And a new report from Canada's largest bank outlines just how unaffordable home ownership is across the country. It actually reached like the, the, the highest level ever and as measure against uh, a household's income. RBC crunched the numbers and only 26% of Canadian households can afford to purchase a single family home. 45% could opt for a condo but when you break it down regionally, the picture looks even worse in big cities. In Vancouver, it would take 102% of the median Canadian income to be a buyer. In Toronto, it's 84%. And even in famously affordable Montreal, it takes over 50% of a regular salary to get into the market. And there's only a few ways that will change. What we'll need is significantly lower um, interest rate. We need prices to uh, at least stabilize, if not decline, over the coming uh, uh, months. But a drop in house prices in major markets seem unlikely. The Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation reporting new housing construction dropped 22 percent in November, and it's poised to trend down in the new year. We're starting to see even those big projects now uh, slowing down quite a lot. So I think we should probably see starts uh, being impacted by that context. While supply is dropping, demand for housing is at its highest level in decades. A new report from the Bank of Canada estimates an additional 200,000 homes, 10 months worth of supply, needs to be built on top of current levels just to keep up with Canada's rocketing temporary immigration admissions. These two issues have been increasingly tied together and there is obviously a correlation we need to look at. The Liberals have announced new housing measures to build just over 1 million new units, but that commitment is spread out over 10 years. In the short term, Canada's population grew by a staggering 430,000 from July to September alone. That's like adding a city the size of Victoria in just three months. I think people can expect further steps in the new year to curb that. Another factor to likely be reined in, interest rates, with most big banks projecting cuts starting in the middle of 2024, which should make housing costs more affordable. But even then, RBC projects new buyers will have to spend upwards of 50% of their income to get into the housing market. Mackenzie Gray, Global News, Ottawa.